Today, I'm here to talk to you about how we use Bazel and a new TypeScript flag to greatly improve our, our build performance. <coughs> TypeScript type checks are not too dissimilar to build actions you get from statically typed languages like C or Java or Go. The main difference is that type checks aren't, uh, they're, they're meant to be pure validation actions. They don't have build outputs. We instrumented one of the core workflows that our developers use to type check their front end code. This workflow takes the PR's changes, resolves them to a set of reverse dependencies, and then runs those targets against RBE. The metrics showed that our performance was horrendous. Even in the P50 case, it took almost two minutes to type check a PR. And as the p-values grew, the run times grew exponentially as well, which led to a horrible devx. One of the major problems with TypeScript performance is that it's single-threaded. There's not a whole lot you can do about this because it's a design limitation of TypeScript itself, but there are ways you can mitigate it. One simple way is to parallelize the build yourself. By splitting up your big targets into smaller targets, Bazel can orchestrate more instances of TypeScript, and thus you can get better performance out of your build. This works really great when using RBE as well, because you can distribute those extra builds across RBE for even better performance. At Canva, we're in really hard in this direction, and we essentially have one build file and one tsconfig per folder. We have uh, some custom in-house tooling. We don't use Gazelle. We have some custom tooling, um, which scans the source files and generates both the tsconfig and the build file at the same time. And for a point of scale, we've got about 105,000 TypeScript files and covered by about 40,000 Bazel packages. When we had to look a deeper look at the, uh, the performance of our TypeScript build, we realized there's a big difference between implementation and module signature dependency graphs, and that's a bit of an implementation detail of TypeScript. TypeScript has two ways of representing any given file. There's the implementation, which is the code that the user writes, and there's the module signature, or the declaration file, which is just a representation of the externally visible bits of the file. For those of you used to languages like C, uh, this will look a lot like a header file with the main point of difference being that declaration files are generally not authored by humans. One major difference you can see between the two representations is that the implementation has a lot more imports than the module signature. When we throw away the implementation details, we can vastly reduce the size of the dependency graph. And this is a really important thing because during a type check, TypeScript does not use the implementations for the dependencies. It only uses the declaration files. The traditional Bazel dependency graph is based on the implementation dependencies. And this is fine if you're trying to do a build or you're trying to run the code. However, if you're doing a type check, this leads to a whole lot of problems in terms of including unnecessary files. All these unnecessary files lead to cache invalidations and just running, running actions that are completely and provably useless. Naively, you might just say, well, why don't we use the module signature dependency graph then? Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. The reason it's not simple is because deriving the module signature is pretty hard, surprisingly hard. <clears throat> Here's a simple example to illustrate why it can be really hard. Here we just define a simple function uh, with no return type, uh, which is one of the things that TypeScript lets you do, is just skip annotations everywhere, and it returns a value that comes from, another de from a dependency. At type check time, TypeScript can, can scan the body of the function and understand what the return type should be, and then use that in its type information to type check the entire code base. However, when we need to derive a module signature for this, the return type is it's, it's unknown. We can't, we can't decide what that is without doing a full, the full analysis that TypeScript does. And this leads you to knowing that well, dec declaration files require a type check to resolve which creates a huge problem. If we want to type check a target, we have to get the declaration files for all of its dependencies. But to get those, to type check those dependencies, we need to get the declaration files for those dependencies, and so on and so forth, and you have type checks all the way down. Putting in terms of a basal action graph, the type check actions all take source files from the disk, but they also take the declaration files, and those declaration files are build outputs of the other type checks. If type checks are slow, this means you've got a slow and horrible critical path in your build, which just destroys your build performance. If only there was a way to generate the declarations without a type check. If we could break that chain, that would lead to so many build performance improvements we could unlock. Thankfully, recently TypeScript released a new feature called isolated declarations. 
Isolate declarations enforces that a file's module signature is statically annotated. When you turn it on, TypeScript will start to emit a bunch of errors for you. Anywhere that a, uh, a, a skipped annotation cannot be trivially inferred, which means that if you've got a function without a return type or a variable that uses a dynamic value, TypeScript will enforce that you add an annotation explicitly in the code. All these extra annotations provide a really important constraint on the code. It makes the declaration file generation a single file, AST-only transform. Simply put, it means that we no longer need a type check to generate declaration files. This opens door, the door to a lot of really amazing improvements. First of all, declaration file generation can be much, much faster. In this simple example, I found a package in the Canvas code base which has about 20 files in it. I used the old type check method to generate the declaration files and it took about 860 milliseconds. In this next run, I used TypeScript's own isolated declarations transform and this ran in 300, uh, 340 milliseconds, which is over twice as fast. But a really important outcome is that now that it's a simple ASD transform, third-party tools can really trivially in, uh, in, in, introduce their own transforms. In this third, third run, I used OXC to do the transform, and it did it in just five milliseconds. That's 168 times faster than the old type check method. We can in integrate this new tooling into our, uh, into our, our basal actions to vastly improve our build performance. At Canva, we introduced a new action which uses OXE to generate the declaration files. This action, this action is a pure source file only action. It has no transitive dependencies, so it's really fast to execute and really fast to cache as well. And importantly, you can see that now our type check actions have no build outputs. They have no dependencies. This unlocks a major problem in our build in that now our type checks are completely and utterly parallelizable, infinitely parallelizable. And our declaration uh, generation as well, because it has no transitive dependencies, they're also infinitely parallelizable, which means that the critical path of the build is now at most two actions long, and both actions are fully and completely parallelizable. We can also use this new tooling in our build file generation to vastly reduce the, the dependency graph of our, uh, of our targets. Before, we used to just emit the implementation dependencies into our build files. <coughs> Afterwards, after, by using OXC, we're able, to impl in, we're able to emit both the implementation dependency graphs and the module signature dependency graph into the build files. When our type check action runs, instead of collecting the transit dependencies using the implementation dependencies, instead we collect the transit dependencies via the module signature dependencies. The result is that we can cull all of those useless files. All those useless actions that we had before are now gone. That means there's fewer action inputs per action, there's fewer cache validations that happen per run, and there's just fewer actions that need to be scheduled and, and tried altogether. At Canva, we spent the better part of three or four months building out the infra, and most of that time was spent code modding the code base. And we saw some really amazing results from this. First of all, the number of type check actions run per PI violation reduced significantly by 73 to 81%. In the P95 case, that's over 10,000 fewer actions that are run per PI violation. And this reduction in action leads to better build time performance as well. We saw a 53 to 60% reduction in type check times as well. Again, in the P95 case, that's a 10 minute reduction in type check times. And the P50 case as well is now under one minute. And these runtime improvements directly, uh, directly trans, uh, translate to developer happiness as well. We saw a 70% increase in the usage of the local type check runs. That means that, that people are relying less on CI and are, are relying more on the local fast type check runs. It's worth noting that we're only about 90% of the way through our migration so far. There's still about 3,000 packages that we have to migrate to isolated declarations. So we expect even further build, build performance improvements as we get to 100%. Hopefully this inspires you to have a look at isolated declarations for your own code base. Thank you.